Hi, thank you for tuning in to new episode for the Boost Guy uh, Uniform Man channel. In this video, we're going to look at 1958 webbing equipment uniform from the Dutch Royal Army from 1958. Please hit the bell notification button, like this video, and let me know in the comment section down below what you think of you ever even heard about this webbing equipment uh, uniform from the Royal Dutch Army during the Cold War era. So, without further ado, let's start this uh, video with an intro other introduction. In the 1940s, of course, World War II has started. 1945, World War II ended. Dutch, uh, the Dutch army was in ruins. Less than a few thousand soldiers uh, were stationed. They were rebuilding uh, and request many manpower, but they also need weapons and equipment and uniforms. They got a huge amount of supplies from the Americans and British uh, troops. Mostly, they were started using British equipment. From top to bottom, the helmet is a 1953 uh, model. At yours, it is an American design. And the inside is almost identical to that from the standards. They will using uh, the fishing net like this, like in World War II, but they will make some adjustments later on. This one is a little bit later uh, version. They have put sandbags and put some paint over it to make more camouflage and make less shiny than that. Also some uh, rubber uh, around it to make it more tighter. The was all green all the way until the 90s. This steel helmet is not much changed uh, from the inside. This one uh, only, of course, is an older version, this one using a, a newer version. When it comes to weapons uh, system, the mostly used was the FM Fowl and the M1 Garand rifles. But for training purposes, we're using mostly the Enfield for uh, shooting practice, M1 Garand and other things were also sure uh, given. But first they were given the M1 Garand in early stages, until there were enough weapons to train with the other ones. The weapons that I use for my reenactment with this uniform is the M1 Carbine. This one is a late war deactivated uh, uh, carbiner from the US. Most of the troops who were given was more for rear guard, echelon units, or logistics, or for uh, artillery crewmen, just to name a few. But this one saw some frontline service in the Dutch military, but not so much. Later on, it was replaced by the Uzi. But this one still see continually service for the, re for the reservist. Uh, later on in the Cold War. Next thing that we're going to look at is the backpacks of uh, the brand pouches. These brand pouches are two of course, but they are Dutch versions. And the reason they are Dutch is because they are much more wider, much more thinner than the British uh, variation. And the British variation don't have a holy underneath, so that you uh, have, uh, if you have water in the magazine pouch, without a problem. That did not have the World War II standard uh, brand uh, pouches. So they want to replace the, that with their own version. See, they will still see continue search with the original versions, but these were slowly replaced by the Dutch uh, version itself. Ranks uh, for insignia on the shoulder patch, those uh, are for the private. I'm starting as a private, I have to climb all the way up if you want to become a captain or general even. So let's go and look towards the belt uh, system. The belt system, British, but they connected with holes in, so that we also can use American system, like field shuttles and canteens, uh, for example. On this side is uh, our own uh, gas uh, mask version. I don't know if it's a domestic uh, version or, or introduced in Canada or in Great Britain. I'm not 100% sure of that, but I think in my well, so far, I think it is a Dutch version, so far information goes, but maybe it can change again. But so far, let's go with the Dutch version for now. It was also introduced in the 1950s, and as you can see, it has been used very extensively during the Cold War. 1978 will be replaced by a new gas mask, but this one still sees service in the late 80s for uh, training purposes only. So let's go to the back uh, of uh, the system and look what's interesting also over there. During the time of uh, marching or uh, with combat conditions, you would always uh, wear this uh, field backpack with you. The smaller version uh, of the backpack you will take always carry around. If you are uh, going to heavy combat, you will dump it and, get, and pick it up later. It's also a 1950s, 1960s model, but some of the patches that I had in the past were painted over and make it green for more camouflage environments in nature. Field bottle made the canteen. I don't know if it is a Canadian or a Dutch uh, version. It was heavily influenced by the US uh, canteen. Field uh, shovel was also heavily influenced by the Germans as the American version. So this is a Dutch domestic made uh, version. But many people will think, why to put this on our shoulder bag behind uh, the shoulder straps? The shoulder bags. The reason is of mechanization. 
if you had put this long shovel between your legs in a combined uh, mechanized armored vehicle then you have a problem you maybe get stuck uh, in between uh, the seats or you can be uh, fall out without realizing so someone in the early 50s thought about hey let's put this behind our shoulder so it will make more comfortable to sit and easier to go out if you are have to in a hurry and then in long term it has helped so it is really interesting to see that this uh, way of thinking was really smart of it of course the field shovel will be rate to be replaced by a more compact version but this will be stay uh, the same for a long time so seeing this uh, webbing equipment you don't see that every day that uh, an army started to use american and british systems so i do hope you have enjoyed this uh, video I will going to make a second video about the 1975 uh, pattern. It will be a bit shorter because it is not much updated, more backwards. But you will see that in the next video. I hope you enjoy it and see you next time.